Hi folks, it's Pete back with another video. Um, if you watched my last video about a week ago, I mentioned at the end that I'd uh, just had a delivery of 10 albums from Discogs. Um, so that's what I'll be showing uh, today. Now, I have the bad habit of uh, late at night, glass of Southern Comfort to hand, looking through the internet and all willpower goes and I end up <laughs> buying stuff that I probably shouldn't, but what the hell. Anyway, I was uh, looking for a particular artist on Discogs and I came across a seller who had the albums I was looking for at a very cheap price. Uh, but he was also having a sale and open to offers. So I made offers on 10 items uh, and he accepted and they uh, I think the majority of them were between three and six pounds so not bad anyway let's get on with it otherwise it's going to be another long one the artist I was looking for originally was the female singer songwriter Cassell Webb oh, sorry about the glare there this is her first album, Lano, and I also ended up getting her second album, The Thief of Sadness, and her third album of covers, Songs of a Stranger. Now, she's an American singer uh, who I think in the early 80s moved uh, to Europe and eventually ended up in London and um, she did her first album well I think she'd been around for a long time and did work on other things but her first solo album uh, was on the what was it Static Records which I think was a, a label owned by Virgin and that was Lano uh, but eventually came out on Virgin's Venture label. Uh, Venture was their sort of uh, avant-garde ambient sub-label and all three albums were on Venture. Uh, like I say the first one I think 86, second one 87 and the third, the covers album, 89. Now, she's got a, a really sort of ethereal, mixed with moody, how to say it, mournful even vocals. I really like it, and the mu music matches. The music is very minimalistic, really. It's treated guitars, keyboards, and... Uh, electronic drums or drum machines uh, not usually my favorite uh, sort of music but this really works with her and really they sh the album should be credited to her and her partner uh, Craig Leon I think who were, I think they're actually married uh, because he does I think basically all the music I think and she sings. The, I'm, I had these on CD and I, I was just thinking about the other day, that's why I went searching for them and they are really good stuff. I think she did about five albums. Um, I think she, she then did a lot of session work. I think she did sessions for I think people like The Fall and Blondie and one or two others and now her and her husband particularly are work more in the classical vein but I would highly recommend these albums and they even though they were made in the 80s they haven't really got that horrible 80s uh, sound to them excellent next up was a first for me the album in the regions of Sun Return by the American th synthesist Michael Garrison. I love electronic music. Uh, 
uh, but this is my first by him. He um, this was his first album, I think, in 1979. He unfortunately died in 2004, 2004 at the age of 47. Um, but he's very much influenced, particularly at least on this album, by the you know the Berlin School of uh, Tangerine Dream, Klaus Schulz, uh, uh, where it you know it's sequencer-driven music. Um, it's in, it's dedicated to the uh, Voyager One and Voyager Two uh, journeys. But if you like your Berlin School electronic music, try it out. Next up is oh, a weird album. Um, at least I think it is. And this is Bob Downs with the album Deep Down Heavy. This appeared on the budget label MFP. Uh, Downs is a sort of a, a jazz uh, saxophonist, flautist, but also plays a quite a lot of other different instruments. Uh, this was a collaboration with the poet Robert Coburn and also features people like Chris Bedding and Ray Russell on guitar, Barry Miller on bass. And it, like I say, it is, it is weird. It's, it's jazz rock with a sort of progressive and psychedelic influences but also heavy blues rock at times. There are also uh, on location recordings uh, on buses and in, in uh, the underground. I mean, there's a track called The Wrong Bus, which is just him and Robert Coburn getting on the wrong bus. <laughs> uh, but there's some great playing on here. Some great guitar, I think, by either Chris Bedden or Ray Russell, I'm not sure who, but it, it somehow works. It's it shouldn't, I don't think, but it does. I enjoy this. He's not got the greatest of voices because he, he's a main singer, but uh, like I say, well worth track, tracking down. I've got one other album by him which is very good, but the one I really want is goes for hundreds of pounds, I think. So there you go. Ah, next up. If you saw one of my earlier videos, I showed an album by John Sermon, which was actually by the band The Trio, which is John Sermon on uh, Saxon clarinet, uh, Bar Barry Phillips on bass, and Stu Martin on drums. They did an album that was, I think, on was it on the Dawn label? Uh, released a double album released in sixty nine or seventy. Uh, that album was then re-released by the label Jazz Vogue, but split into two. Uh, the earlier album I showed was Volume 1. This is the second volume, and it's the same sort of progressive free jazz. In fact, I, though I think I prefer this second album to the first, uh, but it's excellent stuff. Sermon's a great musician. Uh, I like, I've liked everything I've heard by him. Um, but well worth having. I was glad to find that so quickly after the first volume. Right, we now go to Eastern Europe. And the band Laboratorium. And their album Modern Pentathlon. This was on the Polski Nagranium Musal label, which was the Polish state-owned label at the time. Uh, this was from 1976, um, their first album. Um, show you the label. What's the Musa? Made in Poland. This is um, jazz rock fusion, pretty much in the sort of Chick Corea, Return to Forever, 
uh, format uh, or style rather it's really good stuff particularly the, excuse me, the first side which is taken up by the title track uh, which is really um, some excellent playing on their mixture of composition and improvisation uh, with vocals that are sort of improvised which take a bit of getting used to but work the second side is more conventional and probably not quite as good but it's well worth having I was really pleased to find this at a cheap price and it's on this Polish jazz uh, series and this is volume 49 the only problem with it I have never seen an album with a thinner jacket cover it is paper thin I'm surprised it's held up as well as it has it's been sellotaped down the side I think to keep it together but uh, given it's 40 years old I'm surprised it's, it's in any sort of in any sort of good condition but well worth investigating if you like your jazz rock fusion Next up, on the same label, the same series, the Polish duo of Czeslo Glenkowski and Krzysztof Zagraja. Now, uh, Glenkowski is a bassist and Zagraja is a flautist. This is volume 42 in that Polish jazz uh, series. Still thin cover, but not as bad as the Laboratorium. This is the same label as before, but it's blue rather than the red. Like I said, this is just the two of them on bass and flute. Uh, I think I'll read off the liner notes, which give you more of an indication of what sort of Thing it is uh, it actually says the two instrumentalists utilize both mainstream and free jazz experiences they also absorb classical and avant-garde music heritage so uh, that might give you an idea of the type of thing you, that you get on here I thought it was really good I really enjoyed this uh, particularly the the arms called alter ego on the title track particularly a nine and a half minute track was particularly good Again, for not much money. Excellent stuff. Staying in Eastern Europe, we have the album Zabrakstandos. Now this is a duo of Georgi Zabados, uh, who is a pianist and Anthony Braxton, the famous American free jazz uh, saxophonist. Uh, Zabados, Gigori Zabados, I, I've read he's the sort of the, considered the sort of like godfather of Hungarian free jazz. This was recorded in uh, Hungary when I think Braxton was over there for a jazz festival. Uh, all the compositions are by Zabados himself. There's only two tracks per side, but I this I really enjoyed, and I was surprised how much I enjoyed Anthony Braxton's sax playing. The tone of his sax was great on this. I'd, that was the first time I've heard anything by him. Uh, probably being put off by the fact he's free jazz, but I'm getting more into that vein anyway. I don't know if this is typical of his music, but. This is a really good album. Right, and still in Eastern Europe, this guy must and finally forget the seller must have uh, have connections with Eastern Europe because a lot of his stuff was from Poland, Hungary, etc. We have the Hungarian, no, sorry, not Hungarian, the Polish band SBB with their third album, 
Pamiec, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. SPB are a um, Polish prog band. Uh, they're a three piece. Uh, the keyboard player who also plays bass, uh, guitarist and uh, drummer. Um, this is sort of atmospheric, yeah, prog, in, quite inventive prog with with a touch of jazz fusion. It, you know, it, they're supposedly influenced by the Mahavishnu Orchestra. So this is their third album, the second studio album. Their very first album was a live album. I've actually got, I think, all their first five on uh, on CD. This is the first one I've managed to get on uh, vinyl. And this is on, again, this is on that state-owned Polski Nagrania uh, label, and it's the red label. Like I said, this is excellent uh, instrumental. Well, not it's not instrumental. It's there's various vocals on it. There's, this is excellent prog uh, with a jazz edge to it. Um, well worth it. Probably one of the most famous bands to come out of Poland, really. They also, for a while, were the backing group for the famous uh, musician Niemann. Was it Cheslon Niemann, who I've heard stuff by, but I don't know anything by. I need to try and get more by SBB. Well, that's it. Was it 17 minutes? <laughs> uh, there's still more to show, I'm afraid. I've had some more stuff in the week, but I'll leave that for, all, for later. I hope you've all had a good week. And... Uh, Wish you all the best. Bye.